Thank you for taking the time to watch this episode of Life Support. If you enjoy the content, we would ask that you like it, hit subscribe, and share it with your friends. Hey, I'm so glad to have you on Life Support. What we do on this program is a little different than a lot of podcasts, a lot of radio shows, is we tell stories. And what we do is talk about some of the hard things of life because we want you to know that Jesus leans into those areas of our lives and he can really make a difference. And we want you to be encouraged today. And uh, I've got two great guests. I've got Chad and Tiffany Newharth here, and they are with an organization called Rise Up Recovery. We're going to talk all about that. But I'm really glad to have you both here. Thanks for coming by. Thank you for having hey. us. So you two um, ha- have quite a story to tell. And maybe you can just take me, uh, Chad, from, from the beginning. First of all, how did, you, uh, how did you meet? Well, I met Tiffany in Hastings where I was doing IT work uh, for a small company for a treatment center where Tiffany got hired at. And um, so she came in to set up her, uh, she, she came in on her first day, and I came in to set her computer up and her email. Um, I probably hung around for about an hour and pretty sure exchanged our testimonies, and I was weeping in her office <laughs> telling right? my story <laughs> <laughs> on the first time we met. And then, uh, and then it took a couple months after that to, before I finally asked her out. So you kind of hung around and then finally got the courage to task her out, huh? And and how long ago was that? Oh, that was three years ago. Three years ago now. Yeah. And so, Tiffany, what did you think of this guy that came and was was telling his testimony and I knew, crying in your office? I knew I was in trouble from day one. You did? Oh, you <laughs> had did. that feeling? I did. I actually went home and I told my friend Rhonda, I think I'm in trouble. <laughs> this was it was not a part of my plan to meet somebody. In fact, I had recently had the conversation with Jesus of Lord, it's just you and I. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you and I, I'm not doing this relationship thing anymore and and to my surprise, he walked in and completely changed my plans. That's usually what happens when yes. you start having those conversations with God. He <laughs> kind of reminds you that he has his own plan and mm-hmm. you got to get with the program. Mm-hmm. All right, so um obviously given that we're talking about rise up recovery, there's recovery in your stories. So, Chad, why don't you begin and just talk about your story a little bit and uh, and how how this all transpired for you. Yeah, so my story of recovery, um, I had I had a, a an interesting life growing up. Um, I was I didn't have a dad, and I, I never knew my dad, um, and that caused a lot of pain and a lot of hurt for me, and so. When I got into high school and things started going wrong in my life, I immediately um, turned to drugs and alcohol. And it was a way for me to feel better. It was a way for me to fit in. And when a lot of my friends would stop doing it on Monday after partying all weekend, I would just keep going Mm -hmm. and kind of couldn't stop. And um, I didn't finish high school, and I very quickly after high school, um, ch- chose all the wrong paths. And, and so I had, I could go on and on about, about the, the bad stuff and all the, the terrible places that it brought me. But ultimately it was 13 or 14 years of, um, chaos and struggles and pain. And I caused a lot of pain and I did a lot of damage. Um, during that time I, I had a couple children and um, was separated from the from the kids, and um, and so that rather than be a reason for me, you know, they talk about rock bottom, and so rather than that be a reason for me to to turn things around, it drove me deeper into my addiction and drove me deeper into hopelessness, and and I never grew up with um, in, in a in, in a church setting. I didn't grow up knowing the Lord. Um, I had some. I believed in God, but I had some weird misconceptions. Um, you know, it was kind of a good people go to heaven kind of thing. And so I was out. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> like, no hope for I you, burnt huh? that up, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it was just very, very, very hopeless. Um, and now looking back, I can see scattered throughout even some of those worst times, um, I can see 
what I call like kind of breadcrumbs, just little whispers from God, nudges from the Lord. Um, and ultimately, I finally ended up um, at a real rock bottom where I was kind of had burnt all my bridges and I was really homeless and had nothing. And at a point where I was truly, truly ready to be done. Um, and I and I reached out for help, and I was able to get help. I was able to get into a treatment center. Um, it was a secular 28-day treatment center. Really rare story because it's the only treatment that I ever went to. That was a one-and-done treatment story. Um, and I went to this 28-day treatment program. And when I was about to graduate, um, my my counselor well, basically, so there was a thing that they would do at the end of everybody's 28 days, and they would have everybody sit around, and everybody would um, congratulate them and say good things about them and send them on their way, and they didn't do that for me, and it got to the end of the thing, and I was, like, graduated and ready to be done and walk out the door, and I asked my counselor, how come I never got to do the, the graduation thing, and he said, well, we'll do that next time because you don't have a chance. You're not going to wow, make it. Wow, is that right? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and Thank Tiffany, you for your encouragement. Yeah, and, uh, and Tiffany over here as a, as, a, as a CD counselor cringes every time I tell that yeah. story. <laughs> but in some odd way, like it was what I needed to hear. And so I was so determined to prove that guy wrong that I just went all in in recovery. And I got into Narcotics Anonymous, um, which is a 12-step program. And I just did those steps. And I did those steps. And I went to the meetings. And I was going at one point to seven, eight, nine. NA meetings every week. So that's, you know, more than one a day on, on weekends. Um, and that's kind of what, what I was doing. And I was struggling with mental health issues still during that time, but I was staying off the drugs. Um, and so that was pretty good. And then, um, obviously one of the first things I tried to do was, was get custody of my kids back or get some kind of joint custody, some kind of visitation. And that didn't go well. And so that was, that was really, really hard. And I, I kind of failed at that in the court system. And then one day, I was sitting at the beach um, with a girl that I was kind of dating at the time. And we looked up ahead of us. And actually, she nudged me and she said, hey, aren't those your kids? Because she had seen them in pictures. And sure enough, there was my kids that I hadn't seen in probably five years. Wow. Um, playing right in front of us. And it was so fun and it was so neat to see them. And wow, they had grown up so much. And... Um, it was this really neat thing. And, and then they walked past me to get to the bathroom that was behind us and, and saw me but didn't know me. Um, and I was like, well, they just didn't see me, you know. And, and I've got some, some tattoos, and so I made sure like I, that, my, that those were visible. Like, they're going to see me. They're going to know me. And, and because the bathroom was behind us, they walked past us several times, made eye contact. They, it mm -hmm. became clear that they didn't know who I was. And it was at that time that I kind of realized, like, wow, like, I became my dad. Like, my dad who abandoned me. All I knew about my dad is that he was doing drugs and, and you know, chose drugs over me, right? And so that's what I had done to my children. And and so that was a crushing time for me. And um, that was when I was essentially um, really at, at, at my darkest, darkest place, um, even though I had been, now at this point I had already been um, sober for, I don't know, a year and a half. Um, and I was ready to use again, and I was I was depressed, and I went home and I didn't get out of bed for days. And, and, um, and this girl I had been dating at the time that was, that was with me at the beach, um, she would come back to my house every once in a while and, and check on me. I was li living at my mom's, and she and my mom would let her in, and she'd come in, and I was just angry and mean and really didn't want her to be there because she's in recovery too, and I was really honestly kind of wanting to, to use again. And um, she was kind of a backslid Christian, and but I knew that she knew the Lord. And so at one point um, she came in, and and I was just really at my last, at my my wits end and, and I was at the end of my rope and and I, I'll never forget I um I just asked her if she'd help me pray you know I was just like I don't know how to pray but I feel like I need to and 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 um she didn't you know she wasn't uh, uh, uh really really strong in her faith and didn't 
have these perfect words to say, but, you know, that wasn't what was important. And, and finally, I just kind of cried out in our prayer, and I was like, Lord, I don't know if you're real. I don't know if, if I believe anything that I've heard about you, but all I know is is I, I need you. If you are real, I need you so bad. And and I just remember feeling the most incredible peace the moment I spoke those words and cried out for, for, for God. And um, I remember falling asleep and I feel like I slept for a very long time and the most memorable memorable part about the whole experience for me was the next morning when I woke up and I just felt different I just I remember walking across and getting about three steps out of bed and like pausing and like what's going on Hmm. and like I was different and I was like Mm -hmm. and it took a while to get my head around it and what it was was I feel like if I look back on it today was he removed that guilt and that shame that that he allowed that that I was never going to get past that myself. It was just a little bit too much for me to ever, on my own strength, just even to get past it enough to to go to go meet him and, and yeah. get to know the Lord. Like like it was just in the way, and he just he didn't like take all my problems away, right? But he removed what had to get out of the way, mm-hmm. and he just I feel like he just did that, and and it's been, I mean, it's just been a. Um, an amazing journey ever since. It's just wow. been a beautiful thing, and and I um, got involved in my local church and just wanted to learn more and more about this Jesus. And um, you know, I went to, I was able to go to college and and graduate college, and then go you know and get an associate's degree, and then go get another associate's degree, and um, and now I teach at the college that I that I went to, and this is a high school dropout that that did meth for fifteen years and slept on park benches. Wow, how about that? Good <laughs> so, for you. Um, I got full custody of my kids, um, and I and and I met Tiffany, and that's the best part of the story. I'm guessing. <laughs> it is. So, Tiffany, when you hear that, what parts of that story can you relate to in your own story? Oh, so much of it. I I too I slipped into addiction when I was really young. I mean, I went through my first treatment when I was 18 years old. Um, and mine's different than Chad's in that I went through dozens of treatments. I mean, it was probably 12 residential treatments, 12 plus beyond that. I had a lot of mental health issues to contend with. Uh, But for me too, it was really one moment. And mine happened to be in a psych unit on Christmas Eve where uh, after a failed suicide attempt, um, almost nearly completed, I flatlined three times, was non-responsive three times. And... I was talking to a nurse whose name was Margie and kind of telling her my story and marinating in self-pity. And she looked at me and she said, Tiffany, you need God. God is the only one that can pull you out of this pit that you've dug for yourself. And I was angry at that. I was like, no, you don't understand is what I said. And then I said, I just need somebody to save me and somebody to prove that I'm worth saving. And I just got those words out of my mouth. And I so clear heard the voice of God say, Tiffany, I have saved you. Mm. What more proof could you possibly need that you're worth saving? Mm -hmm. And then I saw all these times in my mind that I should have been dead. You know, overdoses, car accidents, nearly completed suicide attempts, but God's hand and his grace saving me and that was christmas eve i woke up christmas day completely different person i mean completely different person not even understanding fully what had happened i didn't understand about being born again or anything you know i too said a really humble prayer of like holy buckets i (laughs) think i just met you god if that was really it like i want to know you i'm pretty enamorated by you and Mm -hmm. and and that was it that set my life on a completely different trajectory i went to teen challenge where I had this incredible year of getting immersed in God and his word and growing in intimacy and fellowship with him. And uh, it's just been an incredible privilege to have all of those situations, even the darkest of darkest times now in God's hands, completely transformed and being able to use them for the good of others. That's really cool. Yeah. And and the thing I like about both your your testimonies is that there's not some uh, big long theological prayer there. It's a it's a cry for help and and God answered. And if um, I've had a chance to speak um, a few times at Teen Challenges, 
And um, for those of you who don't know about that organization, it's an amazing organization to start with. But to be able to go to one of their chapels is like an unreal experience because what what's happening is you have all these people that um, share a lot of these similar characteristics of uh, being, um, you know, basically done and God rescuing them. And it's just raw and it's beautiful and it's like the early church is how I – how I look at it because um, there is no, no one's afraid to do anything. Like um, if you want to jump up and down, raise your hands, run around, do whatever you want. It's great. It's it's really cool. So I think that you both have this amazing walk with God. And so Tiffany, when after you uh, woke up Christmas Day and you were all of a sudden kind of trying to figure figure this out, wow, what happened next? What what transpired in your life to get you to the next step? So I had a conversation with my family on Christmas morning, and I'm in the psych unit, keep in mind. So here I wake up Christmas morning having had this profound spiritual awakening and experience, and I'm basically skipping down the halls talking about meeting God. Not the best place to do that in. (laughs) It's not really convenient. They want to keep me longer and up my meds while... I'm sitting there saying, no, you don't understand. I really met God yeah. last night. They're on the phone at the, you know, go, doctor, <laughs> doctor. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. But I had a conversation with my family, and I'd found out the night before they were at Christmas Eve service, actually at Plymouth Covenant Church, and they were crying out to God on my behalf. Wow. Knowing, I mean, my dad was planning my funeral. That's how significant of a position I was in. I was 83 pounds, emaciated. I was on death's door, and... Yeah, so while they were interceding for me at church, you know, here, God responded to their prayers. And so I said they had been trying to get me to go to Teen Challenge, which is a year-long treatment program, for probably two, three years. And my answer was always, no, Mm -hmm. no way. Mm -hmm. That place is a cult. I'm not going there. Mm -hmm. And my tune changed this day. It was, yes, I need to be wherever I can learn about this God who I met last night. And, you know, when they kind of pinched themselves and realized I was serious. It was the starting point, first of all, of our relationships being reconciled because they had some pretty strong boundaries. Uh, They needed to, right? Mm -hmm. I was so unwell and caused a lot of just chaos in their lives. So that kind of laid the foundation for um, our relationship to be repaired. um, And I really had a willingness to do whatever it took while I was in Teen Challenge, again, to press into the Lord. I miraculously ended up getting my counseling license back. So I had been a a drug and alcohol counselor for many years before I had a relapse and lost everything. And after I had been sober for a year, started working for Teen Challenge, I mean, the mountains that were moved in an instant by God for me to get my license back is absolutely incredible. So I decided, okay, well, I guess this is the path you have for me, Lord. Let's Mm -hmm. do this. So I started counseling again. And... Uh, a completely different experience counseling from the perspective of coming from brokenness myself and experiencing the redemption possible in Christ. So it was, it's, I mean, it's just been amazing to, again, like I said, have the Lord use those, um, that beauty for ashes, right? Those, those times and parts in my life that were absolute destruction to instill hope in people who are in those same places. So, you know, it was through working in treatment and kind of watching people fall again and again and again in that same cycle that I was stuck in. Yeah. And a lot of prayer of saying, what are we missing here, Lord? What are we missing? That that's where he called us, Chad and I, to start Rise Up Recovery. Yeah. So tell me about Rise Up Recovery. What do you do there? Yeah. You want to? Me? Okay. Uh, so it's a, it's a recovery community organization uh, founded on faith. Christ's principles of loving our our neighbors as ourselves, loving God, loving our neighbors. And really, it's about walking alongside people who are either interested in getting in recovery, maybe early in recovery, or struggling with recovery. So it's, on a practical level, really discipleship, kind of helping people take that head knowledge of, okay, I went to treatment and I learned all these things and all these skills, but that's great. How does this translate into real life living? How do I live this out? And that's what we help people with. We walk alongside them and use our life experiences and our recovery experiences to really be an advocate and a cheerleader and, 
you know, just a support person for people. Yeah, I'm sure you have immediate credibility with them because you've walked that road. And and uh, as much as you look back and, and think, I was in a dark place, now you can use the language, you understand how they're feeling, what they're, you know, what they're being tempted with, where they might go next, and uh, it's a pretty great gift to give. Mm-hmm. So, Chad, how does it feel um, when you hear her talk about her story and you've told your story and now God's brought you both together to live out your journey together. That's that's a pretty big redemption story, don't you think? Yeah, it is. It's incredible. And it's, you know, the the one thing Tiffany had just mentioned is when she got her counselor license back and, like, she just knew, you know, that this is what she was supposed to be doing. And that's how it's been. You know, that's how it's been for us. When we, even before we got married, um, in fact, in my wedding vows, I acknowledged that there was a, a an, an incredible um, calling on Tiffany's life, and and that in my vows, I I said that I would do everything I could and pour myself into into bringing that out into um, you know following that, and so we followed we followed that together, um, and it's just been every step of the way the Lord has shown us, like, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Um, so how do I find out more about uh, Rise Up Recovery? You can go on our website, which is riseuprecoverymn.com. That's got a pretty robust website. I would say that'd be the best way. So you can find information about what you offer, how to donate, all those things there? Absolutely. All right, give yes. it one more time so somebody can write it down right now. They're grabbing their pen right now. <laughs> yes, it is www.riseuprecoverymn.com. Okay. Hey, thank you both for coming by and telling your story. It was, uh, it's, it's really important that we hear these stories because it encourages the flock. It encourages your fellow Christians that there's hope and those who are living in places where they think that God isn't there, they're reminded that he really is. So thank you so much for dropping by.